Good morning. Welcome back. This is Carrie Waltz and I am back from a couple of weeks away and kind of wanted to catch you up on what's going on and what to expect from me. Again, if you've never been here before, my channel is devoted to helping you find your happy place in creating and sharing with you things that I have learned from other people, whether uh, in trial and error on my own part. And classes, workshops, and just a way to share with you things that hopefully will help you in your art journey to relax and enjoy the ride. So um, the last two weeks ago, I went on a vacation with my husband. We went to North Georgia and North Carolina for a hiking trip and gathered some fantastic images for future paintings. I was able to uh, take with me my watercolor kit that I will share with you in just a minute on how I travel light when I plan air and hike at the same time. I also, um, went, once we got home, we had, my husband had minor surgery, which he's doing fine, and uh, a birthday celebration with my youngest daughter yesterday, so it's been rather crazy and busy, and, and I am glad to be back. The first thing I want to say today is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you if you have subscribed to my channel, because I now have over 100 subscribers, and I'm really excited about that, because I officially kicked off this channel oh, about two months ago, um, even though I had posted videos before. I never told anyone except for my students that there was anything there. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Today I'm going to share with you the uh, my favorite uh, travel to go kit of watercolor. And um, I don't know if you're a watercolorist. I really never considered myself that. And I wanted to do something creative while I was traveling because I always like to keep my hands busy. I used to knit. I've tried tatting. I've tried zentangle, all different things. And a lot of my artist friends said, Carrie, you just, you just need to use watercolor. It's easy. Take it. Travel with it. And <laughs> I kind of hesitated on that because of everyone saying how hard watercolor was and you mess up, you can't fix it, and it's hard to control. Well, I was visiting Georgetown, Texas in 2016 and I came across an artist and in her studio she said, please come in and see what I do. And she shared with me a watercolor brush or aqua brush and I had never seen before. Now they're pretty common on the market but at that point it, it was so new to me and um, she showed me how they work and many of you have already seen these and probably have one but if you haven't I'm gonna do some demos uh, in future videos on how wonderful this brush is. But everything that I've done, well, almost everything I've done, has been with just this type of brush. And my favorite is the Pentel because it has this nice tiny point. Maybe that's focused, I think it is. Um, it's the size large. And I do all my watercolor with that. And it and the joy of this, it, it makes it so convenient. I don't have to have a bowl of water and or a container of water. This is this is all I need. And it has the water in the brush. So tip number one, make it convenient when you travel. Um, I gave up the knitting, the tatting. Um, <laughs> And I wanted to find something, you know, and you can always read when you're on a trip, but that's kind of antisocial. And I, if you've looked at my dyslexic video that I posted earlier this year, reading is not a happy place for me. So when I found that I could journal 
and I could create memories of things that I've done with friends and family that it was such a joy to do that. So my kit, first of all, contains this Pentel water brush. I started off with larger journals and I finally got to the point where my favorite journal to travel with, because it's small, is this size. It's three and a half by three and a half. It's made by Field Artist and I get a metallic pen when I um, start a journal and I'll say Art Journal by Carrie Waltz, Note Please Handle with Clean Hands, and I usually put the beginning date on the outside. Notice I haven't done that yet, so I'll go back and do that. And just the, the, year, the month and year. And then when I finish this journal, then I'll uh, put the ending on it. So this one started the trip this past week. And because it's small, you don't always have room to write. So I sometimes leave a whole page to write about what I'm doing. And then I use the uh, other side to show the image. This was one of the first waterfalls that we found on our hiking, <laughs> hiking for waterfall trip. Uh, that one was Becky Branch Falls. And then there were two more that were that same day. I'll just hold them up briefly. Um, the joy of this is it's small. I don't spend a lot of time on them. Uh, these were actually not done on site. I did them from photos. The first two I did from photos. This one I did from watching a video of the falls. And when you're hiking with other people or traveling with other people who aren't artists, you don't want to impede on the timing of where you're going, what you're doing. So sometimes I paint while we're on a lunch break and I'll eat my snack or lunch fairly quickly and I'll pull out my watercolors and do a little sketch. And sometimes I just work from photos when I'm back. But I, I want to be able to be creative when I'm with people who don't have that as a focus. I, I want to be able to travel and, and enjoy life and, and not go, oh, I'm sorry, y'all are going to have to wait an hour before, before I go anywhere because I need to paint this. That just doesn't work. So making it convenient, making it lightweight, this kit that I have right here, this whole thing, weighs about a little more than a pound and a half. And I don't usually carry this whole thing with me because of that. And I carry, now some of it will be back at the house or the, in the car, but when I'm hiking, I can get it down to about a half a pound easily. This journal is what I take, the water brush. Um, there's a couple of other essential things that I would also include is a white gel pen. Uh, jelly roll pen is what this one is. Because there's times when I have little highlights that I want to use for lights and, you know, maybe reflecting in a, in a, well, like the light in the water. I wanted to show the little ripples, the teeny little ripples, and I could just do that by using the gel pen. Uh, traditional watercolor, you don't paint white. You leave the white of the paper, and sometimes the white of the paper is teeny, teeny, tiny. And so the gel pen's helpful for that. So that's another tip. So small journal, gel pen, water brush. I also always like to carry with me a mechanical pencil. Mechanical pencil because it always has a point and it also has an eraser. And there's two types of pens that I really like. Uh, this one is the 005 uh, Prismacolor. I'll, I'll write it in the show notes if you can't see it. But the 005 is a teeny tiny black line. 
This, however, is not totally waterproof, so use it after your watercolors have dried and you want to add just a little accent of, of line. This one, which is the Uniball Eye, um, I remember that because it has, uh, I don't want to spend much time on it. Maybe it's focused. By the time I can see if it's focused or not, my bifocals don't don't <laughs> don't see it. Uniball Eye, E Y E, just like your eye, and it is waterproof. So if you want to draw before you paint, and you want to draw in ink, then I would recommend this one. It flows really well, and then you can do washes of watercolor on top. So having these three, you know, these items by itself, about a half a pound. Now, one thing that I really like to, well, you got to have your paint too. Um, so I will show you what I use. When I first started in watercolor, I ordered a Koi watercolor kit, K-O-I, and it was a, called a field, pocket field sketch. See that? And if you look on Amazon, they run sales on these very quite often. Um, I believe Hobby Lobby and Michaels carry them now. Um, but before, when I started this, they did not. I could only get them online. So what I love about this kit, it comes with 24 colors. And you'll see that mine has more than that because I've added some. It comes with these, these 24 I've added these six down below because I was comparing uh, the student grade, which this is more student grade. These are professional. I also made a key. I think that's important to have a key. And there's the key of the ones I've added. So I've just put it in a plastic sleeve and hinged it to where I can close it up. The reason why I think a key is important, and this is another... Um, I would call a not, a, not really a hack, but a tip, is sometimes you're in a setting where the lighting is not real good. And if you're not real familiar with your palette, you need to know what color these are when they're painted. So if I have a key, it's easier for me to remember that. Also, the bottom of this has a finger ring. So if I'm painting outdoors, I can just loop it through one of my fingers or a thumb. I can flip this over and then I can put a picture here if I'm not working in my journal. If I'm working in my journal, this is in my lap and I have my journal in my hand. Now, if I want to put a picture here, what's going to be a problem here? Well, the problem is if you don't tape it in, it's going to fall out. So my next tip is this. This was a business card or it could be an old used gift card and if you need tape whether it's the blue tape or masking tape or artist white tape just wrap your tape around an old card. Then when you need it it's flat it doesn't take up much room and because you've wrapped it it's still usable you just peel back and get however much you need. And if you don't need that much, you just rewrap it and you stick it in your kit. It takes up a lot less space than a roll of tape. Okay, the last thing, well, maybe not the last thing, but one of my favorite, favorite tools, and it's my one of my hacks that I haven't seen on any of the other watercolor kit things, is a pipette. And you think, why in the world would you want that? Well, I usually always travel with a water bottle because I drink a lot of water. And instead of trying to find a faucet that you can uh, fill your uh, brush with, here's your brush. And this kit comes with a brush that has a stopper on it. That's the only way I got the stopper is with this kit. And if I don't have enough water, then I can just stick this in my water, my water bottle, suck it up, and refill my water brush. While I'm traveling, I put the, that on there, 
put it back in the kit. So when I open this up, I have water, I have my brush, and it's good to go. I also include a little bit of a kneading eraser because that holds my water, the end, this stopper. I can just stick that in the kneading eraser and it, it holds the stopper so I don't lose that. Plus it works as an eraser when I need one. So I have the tape that'll go here, that'll hold my paper. And then it's like, oh, the paper. Yeah, what about the paper? What I do is I buy the full pack of paper. It's usually 140 pound that I, and it's, you can buy it and get a coupon and get it at Michael's 40% off. And then I have a paper cutter. I used to be a school teacher, so <laughs> most school teachers have paper cutters. And I just cut it up and I put it in Ziploc bags and uh, I always have a spare scrap of paper or usually several sheets in here because chances are there's times that you'll run into somebody and they'll see what you're doing and they'll go, oh, that's so cool. And I, I just love to share what I've learned with others and get them addicted to art supplies like I am. Well, it just shares the, you know, share the joy. And there's times where you don't want to show what you're or share what you're doing or how to do this in your journal because your journal is private and maybe you know you don't want to do just scrap stuff in there. So I always carry spare paper with me. It's fine to carry it in a little Ziploc bag and you can but if you want to be even more to me a little plan a little bit more than I like to do this. I like to get these four by six photo albums and you take your cut paper and you slide it in the sleeves before you go on a trip so that as you need your paper, you just pull it out, paint on it, slide it back in, and then people can look at your work without um, messing them up or getting their fingerprints on them or whatever. But it also allows you to be able to share what you're doing with somebody else. There's been times when maybe I stayed at somebody's house or I was at a bed and breakfast and, and I really enjoyed something that, of what I experienced while I was there. So I painted a small picture using some paper from out of here or out of the Ziploc bag. I wrote a thank you on the back and I left it when I left. So having the portability and the option to share something or just the fact that you want to show somebody how this brush works and you just pull out a blank sheet of paper, you paint a little bit and you give it to them, you let them play with the brush and the paint a little bit, then it's a lot of fun and um, it gives you something to talk about. So I really like having this available. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is when I started hiking with this, this in itself has, has some weight to it. And when I really want to hike and I'm carrying a lot of things already, I go to a smaller palette. This one isn't my smallest. My smallest is only four colors. It's a tiny Altoid tin. And um, this one you can see is, is used. I have, I believe, 15 colors in, or 13 colors in there, plus the little, you know, kneading eraser. There's a key on the back that sh shows the colors and the brands. And I'll have another video that shows how I make this. There's one more thing, another, another tip, that I carry these clips with me all the time. When I'm, <laughs> my phone's ringing, excuse me. Be right back. I'm not painting these to, to sell or um, put them in a gallery. 
I'm painting these for my memories. Your your journal is yours, and you can share it with people if you want to or not. That's your choice. But one of the things that um, I painted this past week is something that I really enjoy collecting and noting in the fall is fall leaves. And when we were on one of the hikes, as I was hiking by, I just Brad was so sweet. He gave me a Ziploc bag and a little clip. He goes, "Here, this is for your leaves. Because he knew I liked to pick up leaves on the hike and then paint them when we got back. And this particular leaf was so tiny, but it was, it was beautiful. And these are actually life-size. So I want you to see how tiny, tiny that one was. And this one actually flew in an open window and landed in my lap. So I just thought it was just asking me to paint it. So I put both of those in in one of those journal pages. And then I just write the date and a brief message of what was going on. But it's, it's just a wonderful way to capture memories. It does help if you know how to draw. And, um, but even if your drawing's a little wonky and a little off, you're still capturing the memory. And you share it if you want to, or you don't. So I hope the many little tips I've given you are helpful and it'll make you want to try it yourself. I hope you look at some of the videos that I'm going to be posting on watercolor. And if you can't wait till I post those, then go back to some previous videos. You know, just go to my channel, click on that icon that has my lovely face, and go way, way back uh, to some of the first ones where some of my watercolor classes and I was doing some demos. Those are not edited. But I hope that some of what I've shared with you today has given you some tips and and tricks as to what you can do with your art and ways for you to travel. Again, my my travel kit that I hike with is usually less than a half a pound, and that's also the one that I carry in my purse. I usually always have it with me. I actually used it the other day while I was waiting for my husband to get out of surgery. I pulled it out and was working in the corner of the waiting room, and it just helped pass the time. So get out, find some way to be creative, find some way to make it convenient for you. Don't worry about what other people are doing or looking at. I was nervous when I first started this. I would want to do it where nobody could see me, but I've gotten over that, and um, you will too. So please let me know if there's anything here that you've really enjoyed or if you want to see more of. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. I really appreciate those of you who are following me in this journey. And uh, hopefully you will see me on a more regular basis and no surgeries in the future. Fingers crossed. So God bless you and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Okay, I decided to do one more thing before I let you go, and I wanted to show you a little bit more about how this works. When you get this kit to start with, it does not come with a pintail brush. The brush that it comes with works fine, but it does screw on backwards. The first time I tried to load my brush with water and screw the lid on, I thought it was defective. And it just the fact that it goes backwards. This particular one is a pintail brush, and I keep that in my kit because I just prefer that. So I take the stopper out. You can put the stopper in one of these holes that's already there. Sometimes it still falls out if you um, aren't careful. I still use my kneading eraser. This kit comes with sponges that fit here and here, but uh, as you can see, I didn't really use them. I prefer the paper towel, and I clip it to the side. The thing about these holes is this mixing palette fits in there, or it can fit over here, or it can fit over here. And depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed, you can put it wherever it works for you. Well, because most of the time I have this in my lap, and I'm holding what I'm painting. I just put the mixing tray in there. And you can see that uh, what's nice about it is you can just leave the paints and let them dry. 
Just use them again the next time you start painting if you need that color. If you don't need that color, simply wet the section, take your paper towel, wipe it out. It's clean. No need to clean it every time you paint. Now, one thing about the brush is always remember to put the end of the brush when you take it off the point, put it back here because if you lose this cover, you're going to have a real hard time protecting this point. So when I'm through painting, I always put this back in, protects the point. One time I thought, when I first had this kit, I thought, well, it's going to get moldy and gross if, if I, you know, the moisture. And even though I'm going to separate this, I took the lid off. Well, when it got tilted, it bent the end of the brush and I never quite got that tip back. So just uh, learn from my mistake and don't repeat that. So the kit, the brush that comes with it works fine. I just prefer this one. So you have your brush, you have it full of water, and I'm just going to do a very quick loose painting. I want it uh, wet on wet. So I'm just going to squeeze a little water out to where I can see shine on it. This is just going to be a random flower uh, bouquet in a vase. It's one I've done a lot. So I'm just going to pick up some colors and dot them in. It's going to be a little vase eventually. That vase is going to be down here reflecting some of that water, that color. Oops, sorry, can you see that? And while that's wet, I want it flowing. I'm going to throw in some yellow, some other type of flower. Obviously, you can tell that I'm not worried about what type of flower it is today. That's really not important. It's just to give you an idea of how easy this is. It's so convenient just to be able to paint. I mean, if you even kids, I've taught kids how to do this. Just They just like to squeeze it sometimes a little too much. Well, these greens, I do like to mix greens because what comes out of the kit is rather maybe a little less natural of a green. And I had some orange on my palette, so orange is close to the opposite of green, which is red. And so I wanted to put some less vibrant greens in there. I mean, you can streak in little leaves if you want to. This is still fairly wet. That's dry enough to get some uh, harder lines. And, you know, you can come back, turn the brush sideways if you get. Now, see how that's getting more exact? I might not want that in this painting because everything else is so loose. So I can come back and say, well, we'll tighten it up and we'll put some more darker colors now that that's started to dry. And we'll just create some other flowers in here that have a little more definition. And just have fun with it. I'm just playing. I am not trying to do anything spectacular on this. I'm going to pick up kind of a neutral off the palette that's already there. I'm just going to wet that. I'm going to create kind of a shadow of a, a vase here. If I want to put in some background, oh, that's kind of a dull, dull color. That's all right. I'll just spread it out, make it a little less dull. Watercolors do dry lighter than, um, than you paint them in. So I'm going to put in some more flowers here. Uh, take some of these dark ones down here, pretend that they're branching off and going out a little bigger. That'll And 
and I've only used about three, four colors at the most here. But what I do um, when I'm playing around with this kind of stuff is I let it dry till um, there it should not be damp to the touch or or shine. So right now it's 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 fairly wet. So I'll put it aside and and let it dry. Then I would come back with my tiny tiny black pen and I would do some squiggles around that ink. Let's see if I can get it to dry real quick. I'll just stop the camera and I'll be back. Okay, while I'm letting that dry, I do want to show you a little bit more about this smaller tin. This is an Altoid tin that um, Lovely Peppermints come in. And I ordered these half pans. This is a half pan that were empty. And I also ordered a s strip of magnets. Some of these half pans you can they come with the magnets that you could just uh, break break apart the magnets and they're already the right size. The joy of having it as a magnet and not glued in is I can change my palette. Or if I want to do my small palette and I want to take four of these colors, I can pick whichever four, put it in a smaller Altoid. Because it has a magnet, it will hold and hopefully... You know, when you drop it, now if you drop it, jar it, it'll jerk it out. But I love the portability and the flexibility that this, that this gives me. I always write the brand. This is Windsor Newton Dioxazine Purple because the brands make a difference and I want to know what brand it is. So if I want to refill it, I know what tube of paint it was. And these others, you just like uh, Daniel Smith, Hansa Yellow, Win Windsor Newton Gamboge, I think is how you pronounce that. But I want to put it back in the order that I had my key. My key I just drew out on a piece of index card, and I wrote the brand, the color, and then I just used clear packing tape to cover that so it would protect it. It also allows me, if I want to change the palette, if I ever don't want to have those colors in there, I can peel back the packing tape and replace that, but it's not permanent. I also have seen uh, on some of the other videos to where uh, they take everything out and they spray paint white uh, on the inside, and that allows you to see your colors a little better. I'm going to do that because I just got some spray paint not too long ago. I just haven't done it yet. But I go through enough Altoids that I can always replace it if it gets too rusty. But if this is just, again, very convenient. It's small. It's lightweight. I can choose what colors I want. These are just from liquid tubes of watercolor that I have just poured in. I start at one corner to the other. I tap it when it's poured in. Poured in. I tap it to get it to level out and let it dry. You can see that some colors look a little more wet than others such so just the different brands and the different uh, hues I guess some just look more dry than others and I don't really know why but it, it's they just they put water on them and they'll loosen right up so again just like the other if my palette is dirty just add a little water put my lid back And it cleans right up. See? No big deal. I love it. Alright, so I'm going to come back to the little sketch that I did just a second ago and show you how I use my small black pen. This is the Zero Zero Pentel. And when I use this, if I want them to look like roses, I can do little sp spirals like so but I, I usually don't even try to mimic anything particular uh, I can just make up little shapes so it's just oh, it might not be quite dry enough yeah it's not 
Oh, there we go. This pen might be about dead. So, I'll get another one. This is a this is a thicker pen and it's going to be a lot darker, but I can just do little squiggles even with the uh, leaves and give a different feel to what was there. This is a lot heavier than the other one, so if you don't want your lines as, as bold, then um, you would use a smaller pen. But just by adding some creases and wiggles and squiggles, it just kind of gives you a variety of different looks. And I would never, well, I know I'm going to say never, I hardly ever outline the entire thing. So that's enough to get a feel for a loose bouquet in a vase. Very, very simple. But it gives you an idea how the pins work um, in the in the brush. So hope hope that helped. There's uh, a lot more uh, videos that I will post, and the, they will be a lot more detailed than that. Um, but I hope something that I've showed you today has been helpful. That it might encourage you to try to pick up a watercolor brush and see what you can create on your own and fill your time with something fun to do while you're waiting in the hospital if that happens to be where you are. But it's a great way to pass the time to share with others and be creative all at the same time. So thank you for joining me. I hope you like something that you've heard today. Give me a thumbs up. Please comment if you get a chance and let me know what is helpful to you. And I'll be back soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.